One of the most frequently asked questions on my channel by far is how do I edit my photos? So today I want to go over my process because I don't think there should be this big secret, especially since communities like the film community, people are very open at how they get their photos to look the way that they do. So they're shooting a specific film stock like Portrait 400 or something. They're very open about that and it's more about the composition and that's kind of the same type of method that I take into my digital photos. So it's all about the composition and editing is just kind of getting the picture right to where I want it. So that's exactly what I'll be doing today. So this first photo was taken on an A7IV. I actually took out this camera just to test out this new filter that I got. It's a little bit stronger than the Promise filter. So a lot of the halation you get here, it's mostly because it's a really strong filter. So it's not really uh, quality of the lens or the camera. So just keep that in mind. So I severely under underexposed this camera because I the sun was really harsh here. So I really, really underexposed it. So I wanna, the first thing I would do is just fix the exposure. And if you follow my channel for a while, you know that this process is gonna be exactly the same from a few years back. So um, the way that I like to edit my photos is through picture profiles. And the picture profiles that I use are from a project called the uh, Archetype Process Project. And these, these are not cheap uh, profiles by any means, but they're the best that I could find for kind of replicating that film look. And honestly, I mean, Obviously, it's not going to give you the same exact look as film would, but it gives you similar color profiles. So that's kind of the base that I like to have for all these photos. So as you can see here on my screen, uh, there's the one that I have is the Kodak Pro Pack, which gives you like Ektar 100 looks, Portra 160, Portra 400, and Portra 800 down here. And the cool part about this pack is that it also gives you different type of um, scanner look so the Noritsu or the frontier scanner so you get a couple of different ways to actually give you the look that you want so for these type of shots i usually like to have it a lot warmer and that's something that ektar 100 gives me so ektar 100 plus two is what i usually do for these type of images and as you can tell it already looks you know um severely it already looks a lot lot different from when i started and as you can tell, it, since I really underexposed it, it's really, it still needs to be raised up quite a bit. And the thing about these profiles that you have to be careful with, especially if you're looking to buy them, is it does bring down the exposure right when you um, apply them. So I usually, I like to fix the exposure before I even apply anything, just to make sure that when I look at it, it's as um, right on the exposure as I wanted right before I even click on anything. And as you can tell, you can also check the amount of the profile that you want to put onto the picture. So if you want more of a subtle look or like an extreme look, you can go both ways here. And for these type of images, especially images that are like, that have like some type of filter on it, like a Promise filter, I like them to look a lot warmer. So like as it is, it's a pretty warm image. Maybe I'll, I'll bring up the shadows a little bit and bring down the highlights. And I'll still play around with temperature. You know, it's a lot warmer than it looks, but I think it's a really cool look. And, you know, I also like to enable profile corrections because this particular lens has um, has a lot to correct. Another thing I like to do with all of my images, I gravitate towards like an eight by 10 type of um, frame ratio. So I like to compose for that as much as I can. It doesn't always work out, but um that's something that i keep in mind most of the time when i'm out shooting so this will be a finished image for me maybe a little bit brighter but that's basically how i got the picture from this to this so like all my edits are very subtle as you can tell i didn't do much with like uh, any of these tabs here like i played around a little bit with the highlights even the shadows are like super super mild edits here. I don't even touch the turn cur tone curve. I, I like to use the tone curve for specific use cases, but normally I don't like to touch any of this stuff unless I really need to, or I want to have a particular look. So uh, yeah, this is a finished image for me. This is the before, this is the after. This next photo, it was taken with a Ricoh GR3 and it was taken in Mexico on a trip that I did last year in November. And I was visiting some family. So we went to a local Mercado. So what I like to do with my images, I like to see if there's like leading lines in anything. So as you can tell, there's like 
there was these all this mountain of fruit that kind of framed the lady right here in the in the middle so I, I thought it was really interesting so it's one of my favorite images that i took last year you know it's a simple image but i really really like it so as like as you can tell as you as i said previously um these profiles bring bring down the exposure so the first thing i do is i raise the exposure just so i can get something that's um looks kind of what the finished finished product will look like in terms of exposure so as you can tell i'll show you what all these different profiles do to the image and for this one if i'm not mistaken the edit that i ended up with and that i ended up sharing was not Ektar 100 i think it was portra 160. So as you can, just because I wanted like to play around with the colors and post a little bit, and I know that if I pick something like Ektar 100, it already like kind of makes everything really contrasty, which I didn't really like for a lot of the fruit. So I wanted to just keep it as is and just bring up the exposure. And I do like to play around with these two tabs, vibrance and saturation. So I usually bring this up if I want more color and if I don't want like the harshness of these profiles to take over the image. So if I want to just bring up the saturation, I kind of play around with that. So this is the beginning and then the, what well, we have in the edit so far. I'm going to bring up the shadows a bit. And for this particular photo, I am going to add like a little bit of an S curve here. So if you're familiar with uh, Lightroom or any type of editing software, um, there's a pretty common curve on your on edits. So as you can tell here, it looks it's called an S curve because it kind of looks like an S. And it'll add quite a bit of contrast here. And this will show you kind of what it did. So I'm really happy with this edit so far. I'm not gonna do too much more. Um, I, I really like the way that the fruit pops with these colors. It doesn't all look red. It looks, um, you know, like you can see separation in between all these colors. And one thing that I do like to add, you know, uh, if you look on my left side of my screen here, there's a bunch of different like Lightroom uh, presets are already built in. There's a couple of the ones that I like to use. Pop culture is the one that I have for my uh, wedding work. Um, it's not something I sell, it's just something I like to just play around with. So these are all the presets that I use for my wedding work. And then I did try a couple of um, Nirav's, Nirav, I'm not surprised, I'm not exactly, how to, exactly sure how to pronounce his uh, a name, but it's a very uh, popular photographer. I tried his um, presets for a bit. Um, they weren't really for me, but um, I know some photographers who make really beautiful work with them. So I don't really use any of this stuff except for the tools, which are really great to add like anything like grain. So I use these quite a bit just to add grain really quickly. So there's a low, a medium and high grain. And as you can tell, like right when you hover, you will get a, a little bit of um, grain, medium amount of strength of grain or high grain on your images. I usually go with the medium if I'm gonna add any grain to my images. And I think it just adds that, you know, that film look that people like on digital images. So this would be a finished image for me. So, and I'll show you what the before and after will look like. So like I said, a lot of my edits are super subtle. I like to keep them that way for my personal work just because I have been trying to be more mindful of composition. So all these photos are compositions that I really enjoy and the colors are just like an added bonus. This photo was also taken with the Ricoh GR3 in Hawaii last year. And the first thing I will do with this one, because you can see a, quite a bit of vignetting on the sides of the frame, is just enable uh, profile correction and it just evens it out. And like I said, um, exposure is really important. Um, since I look, I, I can see here that this image is a lot um, cooler than I want it to be. I'm gonna bring up the temperature. So that looks really good to me as it is. And this is just, you know, correcting uh, the lens correcting and some minor exposure and temperature edits here and that's without adding anything in and so i can show you what this looks without the picture profile so like these minor edits that i do and then i can bring up the vibrance and saturation this is what it looks like without anything this is just a, a rico gr3 raw photo without just editing just very simple things here on the on this tab right here. So let's just add a picture profile here and I already know that I'm gonna add either Ektar 100 
or Portra 160 to this one. So as you can tell, this is Ektar 100 on the Ritsu uh, scanner, I believe that's what it's supposed to be, or a Frontier. So if you're more into like the green tones or in the more of the reddish tones, you get uh, uh, to pick which one you like the best. So I usually stick with Noritsu, and as you can tell, that's what it did to the image. And let's bring up the exposure even more here and bring down the highlights. And I feel like it should be a little bit more saturated. And maybe I'll bring up the, yeah, there you go. We'll bring up the temperature. And a lot of the stuff that I do, it's just basically just clicking around until something looks good to my eye. And that's mostly what the thought process that goes behind my like personal work. I don't like to overthink edits, especially because it's this is like more of the my fun projects. Like I do a lot of weddings and a lot of, um, you know, uh, some commercial stuff, very small and commercial stuff. So a lot of my personal stuff, I just like to like do a couple quick edit things and um, just send it off and just post it without even thinking about it. So this would be a finished image. I was still doing eight by 10 crop here. And I will bring the exposure a bit more too. And the cool thing about uh, this new version of Lightroom, I know Lightroom, I wish it wasn't a subscription-based type of uh, program, but it's the, it's what I'm used to. So I haven't jumped ship to anything else. So I'm glad that they're adding some features that are somewhat useful. So they made this uh, masking feature a lot more robust. So like if you wanna um, change stuff on the background of uh, your images, oh, sorry. Um, you can do that, but it also has like things like selecting the sky. So like, for instance, like I want to make the sky a lot more saturated. So you can do that right from this here and it'll do it. It'll select just the sky and you can play on with the colors a bit. So like if you wanted like a lot bluer, or a, it looks like there's a fire somewhere, you can do that. But if you want to just add subtle things like saturation in the sky, you can do that. Or if you want to play around the, with the highlights and the shadows and all that, you can do that as well. So yeah, this will be an, a finished image for me. So this is the this is the before, this is the after, before, after. This was also this was also taken with the Ricoh GR3. These are a lot of Ricoh GR3 pictures because I've been shooting a lot more with both the Leica Q2 and the Ricoh GR3. So I've been trying to use them for different use cases. This is just like on a, on a normal walk on a weekday with my son. So this picture is like a nothing special picture, but I kind of liked how weird it is. It was taken last month, and as you can see here, this a Santa in a motorcycle. So like. It was, I was, I tried to get it very quickly. So I, you know, I wasn't able to adjust my settings very well, but I think I can still work with this and get an image I still like. So let's do an eight by 10 crop here. And maybe I'll do it vertical and see how that goes. Cause I do like these lines here. So Let's start with that and I'll bring up the, I'll do maybe some brush corrections here because I do want the shadows to be a lot brighter, but I don't want everything else to be overexposed. So let's start with that. Let's do that here and bring up the shadows. And I do want it to be a little bit warmer since I, you are gonna see the shadow bits quite a bit more. Yeah, let's start with that and just fix the exposure a little bit. Let's see how that goes. I'm also gonna bring up the temperature quite a bit because I wanna have it more to pop the color here on this building. And let's apply one of the picture profiles. So just for sake of showing you what different prof profiles do, let's do like a Portra 400. I know it's like a popular film stock. So let's do a Portra 400 on a Noritsu scanner. 
and let's do let's just do the the normal one and i'm gonna bring down the intensity on this profile and i feel like this needs more contrast so i'm gonna add some contrast here and let me enable profile correction and let's bring up the vibrance and saturation a bit it's a little bit too much let's do that here and then i can adjust my edits here let's do that and maybe let's let's crank up the this profile i think it, it might pop a little more so as you can tell how much if you you can bring it past 100 and see where it goes and i really like the look of this actually so like as you can tell you know it's a rico gr3 it's a it's not like the like a q2 where you get tons of room to wiggle uh, a lot of wiggle room to crop things i still do it because a lot of this stuff is just for social media so if it's the quality is reduced it's not a big deal to me so uh, for this one i will add some grain and let's do maybe what does the high look like quite a bit of, of noise but let's do low since we did crop it quite a bit and i think this should be a finished image you know it's it's a fun one you know it's it's kind of wacky it has like a a fun story behind it i know unless you i told you the story that it's not anywhere near christmas um it wouldn't make any sense but i still think it's a fun photo uh seeing santa on a bike and yeah this would be a finished look for me before after there you go. Okay, now now we're off to the Leica Q2 images, and this one was taken taken at I forget what it's called um, Disney Springs, and in Disney Springs apparently they have these cars that just go on the water. So um, this was the best I could do because I was just walking by. So I thought it was a, a cool little concept. Uh, let's do an eight by ten crop here. I really liked. The way that this guy was pointing um i think it's pretty fun i wish that it was closer this way so the composition was a little bit nicer i do like that there's like some context on what this is and so i i, I do like this pointing finger here and this phone it's a little distracting but you know i'll let it go i do want to adjust the horizon a little bit and make sure all of this is in here. The composition is a little weird, but um, I really like this photo. So I, I want to see what I can do with these edits. So as you can tell what a Nectar, 4, a Nectar 100 does on in different um, intensities. And with the cool thing about these profiles as well is that you don't just get the normal ones. You also get if you're pushing film. I'm not super familiar with film, so I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm talking about. So there, there is some pushed looks. So as you can tell, they're a lot more intense. So let's do like, um, let's do a pushed look for this one. And since it's later in the day, let's do over like a Portra 800 pushed, like a plus one. Let's do that for this. And again, let's bring up the exposure. I didn't bring it from the beginning, but let's do that here. Maybe a little bit warmer. Give it that vintage, uh, vintage look that this car actually already has. So I think these profiles lend themselves well for this kind of image. So let's do that. Let's also, uh, let's put an S curve on this one. I, I feel like it needs it. And do this right here. And I'll show you what it looks like before and after the S curve and maybe a little bit of vibrance and a little saturation at the top. And let's do some medium grain here. Maybe let's bring this up to make it look a little bit more faded. And maybe exposure, let's see. Let's 
yeah that looks good to me let's i think this is a finished image like i said most of my edits are very similar the only thing that changes usually the crop or the composition if I'm, i didn't get quite get it on time i've been trying to do more like on the fly things so like not so much street photography but just taking photos as I would go about my day and try to find something and if something passes me by I try to get it and try not to overthink it so I just take the shot and then just forget it and then look about, look look at it in post and see if I can work with something with that image. So yeah I'm really happy with this edit actually. Um, I don't even remember if I've edited this photo before so yeah I don't think I've ever posted this photo so this would be a before and after. Yeah I'm really happy with this image. And kind of in that same, and kind of in that same sentiment, like this picture is like a nothing picture. Like I don't, even, I forgot where I took this photo. I think I just want to test out like the highlight weighted metering on my Q2. So this picture was just, it, it, it wasn't anything. So let's do what it would look like if I just copy and paste these um, basic edits here. So I don't want to mess around with the white balance, but let's see, let's see how that goes. So let's do that here. And like I said, I severely underexposed this stuff. So it's all about just playing with um, your your tools and seeing what works for you. And um, this picture has quite a bit of um, noise because of the grain. So let's lower it on this. And yeah, I mean, it's it's like a simple picture, but you know, it's it's a fun one. So why not? Um, and I do like the way that the light is spilling from the outside. So I really want to bring that up a little bit here and then maybe make the shadows a little bit darker for this just to play around with that. And this was also somewhere in Disney. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this one is. Um, so yeah, this is what this photo will look like with similar edits from the last image. This is before, this is the after. And Leica cameras, they retain shadows really well. So I always underexpose most of my images. So kind of why most of my work is a little underexposed is just because I'm so used to shooting with a Q2 that I just, I just forget to uh, expose properly. And I just tend to underexpose everything um, just because I'm used to it. So yeah, this is a finished image. You know, it's, I think the light is really pretty. So especially with all these ribbons here. So yeah, this is a, a finished film uh, edit as well. So this is the before, this is the after. And honestly, and honestly, now that I look at them, most of these photos are from Disney. So uh, if, if you're sick of the Disney photos, I apologize. It's a lot of what I do with my wife. We visit the parks quite a bit and with my son now, like we're at the parks all the time. And we actually went on a cruise um, this last um, March. So I took my camera along and I wanted to do like more street style stuff. So um, I took quite a bit of images. So this one, I wanted to do like a little bit of silhouette stuff, just kind of out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, it's not like the, the, the best photo out there, but I really wanted to see what I could do. And I was really happy with the way this looked. So let's play around with this image here. And I know this, I really want to highlight the silhouette. So what I'm gonna do is just go right into profiles. So as you can see here, let's do, um, let's do portrait 400 on this one. But let's do it with a um, frontier scanner. Let's do that here. Let's bring up the exposure a bit and bring down the shadows. Let's see. I kind of want to see what this looks like. Sorry, I'm kind of just thinking on the fly for this one. Um, and this is just kind of a good way to show you how I usually work. Um, I want to just play around with kind of darkening this area just to see if I can bring more attention. And this is, looks a lot uh, uglier than it's supposed to, but let's, this is, that's, that's the creative process. So let's bring the exposure back a little bit so it's not as harsh. Let's bring down the shadows. And let's do, um, maybe bring the shadows back here a little bit and then definitely saturate this yellow more, but I'm not super happy with this type of yellow. So I'll try to get a different 
hue in there. There you go. That looks a lot more pleasing to me. Let's do that here and bring down the shadows even more. And so I really like the harshness of the highlights and the shadows, like how there's so many shadows here and there's like a little bit of sun shining through here. Let's do a medium amount of grain. I did crop quite a bit, but that's the beauty of the Q2. And yeah, that's it. Let's do before and after. This is the before, this is the after, and this is a finished image. This photo was actually also taken on the cruise and there was a medical emergency. So they had to fly uh, a helicopter in, in the middle of the ocean. So we were just in our room and I just kind of snapped this picture as it was landing or it was waiting to land. So uh, I was really um, taken aback on like what kind of that process looks like. So I wanted to just take a photo of that. And um, so this is the edit because I posted it on Twitter and on Instagram and all that. So this is the what the original image looked like. So if you've seen my photo online anywhere, um, this is what they originally looked like. So like I said, I usually underexpose everything and um, I'm gonna bring up the exposure here. And I'll kind of go through this and show you what it looks like on each of these briefly. So as you can tell, all of these give you uh, different looks. Some of them are more subtle or a different variation of the same profile, but I think it it really adds to um, to photos quite a bit. So let's do, I believe I did Portra 800 and I did, um, or was it, I believe it was Ektar, honestly. So let's do Ektar and let's bring up the exposure. And let's bring the shadows quite a bit here. And I really like the cool tones in this photo, so I really wanted to highlight that. So I don't want to bring up the temperature um, more than I already have. And I will recompose here just a bit. And let's um, do an 8 by 10. Yeah, so like this is a super simple edit and most of my edits are this simple. So like if you're someone who likes to kind of overthink your shots or your um, your edits. I, I kind of challenge you to think of it in more simple terms and see what you can do with just basic corrections, like not overdoing it with the colors or the hues or anything like that. Just start with a, a nice base that you like. And then if you want to experiment, experiment with it further. But um, I try not to do a, a whole bunch to my uh, pictures besides just applying a picture profile. And that's pretty much it. I'll add some grain to this. And up the haze a little bit because it was super hazy. Like I like the look, but I wanted to be just a little bit less hazy. Bring up the blacks and the shadows. And maybe I'll bring back the exposure a little bit. So that's basically it. So I'll show you the before and after. This is the before, that's the after. And if you saw my last, if you watched my last video, I did all of this on an iPad. So all of these are kind of from the start and I do this mostly on my iPad if I'm out and about. So if you haven't watched that video, please check it out. And um, yeah, so I got a lot of interest on this photo. So if you are here from Instagram or from Twitter, this is basically how I got the image to look the way that it does. So this last photo was taken at Disneyland with the Ricoh GR3 and this photo was taken right after it stopped raining. So and the sun had come out and everybody was wearing ponchos. So I wanted to take a picture of that. So I really want to highlight some of that contrast in the colors. So um, this picture was also really, really simple to put together. So I used uh, Ektar 100 plus two here. And then I brought up the exposure and wanted to make it a little bit warmer and bring up the shadows just a little bit so you can get more context on where everybody is. And I brought up the vibrance and the saturation. And let's bring up the exposure a bit more. Let 
and that was basically it so this is like a super simple edit um and again i do an 8x10 type of um crop here and i just added some grain and it was a finished image And this is the before and the after. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you have any further questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.